Yeah, when Castle Geyser erupts, it erupts. Things been going off for over 30 minutes now. The steam and the water just keeps shooting out of this thing. Massive amounts of steam coming out of there. It is blacking out the sun. The, the shadows down here on the ground from it, you would think this is a time-lapse video of some spectacular cloud cover. We've got a few clouds in the sky today, but this, my friends, all coming from the steam cloud coming off of Castle Geyser here on a spectacular Monday afternoon in Yellowstone National Park. All right, friends. Well, that was it. Old Faithful right here. That's the most famous geyser in Yellowstone National Park. In fact, I think when a lot of people think of Yellowstone, they actually think of Old Faithful. So uh, definitely a centerpiece of the park right there. One of the uh, top sites that you'll want to make sure you see while you're here in Yellowstone. However, there's a lot more to the Upper Geyser Basin than just Old Faithful. While Old Faithful may be the most famous, there are plenty of cool geysers out here on the Upper Geyser Basin. We have five predictable geysers right here in the Upper Geyser Basin, and we're going to go stroll around and take a look at them now. Let's go. So we're out here on the upper geyser basin. This is one of three major geyser basins that are found along the Firehold River here in southwestern Yellowstone. This place has over half of the world's active geysers just right here in the upper geyser basin. As you look out behind me right here, Old Faithful back there in the background and this one here in the foreground, this is the Beehive Geyser. Now, Beehive Geyser is one of the irregular geysers here in the upper geyser basin. It's not predictable. However, it does shoot out a fountain of water some 200 feet into the sky. Old Faithful over there keeps chugging along the entire time, but Beehive Geyser provides quite a show when it's actually going off. All right, friends, as you look behind me here, you'll see Heart Spring, and in the background, that's Castle Geyser. It's currently going off over there. should be going off for about 20 minutes. That thing is fairly predictable, going off about every 14 hours. It's one of the oldest geysers in the park, as you can see by the center that's built around it. That's S-I-N-T-R. Basically, it's silicon dioxide, and every time the geyser erupts, it puts a little, any, of the, any water that comes out of there has some of those minerals from deep within the earth, and it deposits them around, and that's how they build those cones. A cone like that indicates that it's thousands of years old, while Old Faithful's cone over here, which is much smaller, indicates it's probably only hundreds of years old rather than thousands of years old. Now here we have Heart Spring. This is a bit different. Now we have a few different types of thermal features here in Yellowstone. You have the geysers, you have the hot springs, you have fumaroles, and you have mud pots. One way we can tell the difference between hot springs and geysers by looking at the siliceous center, which is around the hot spring right here. This will indicate that it's probably not an erupting geyser because if it were erupting it would blow that right out of there and as you can see by looking at it closely there's a thin layer of that all the way around the spring itself and this is why you don't want to walk close to those things because it can look like it's solid but then you step right through it and you find that it's only a few inches thick yeah look at that the lion geyser right here spraying out a little froth from the bottom there from it coming out and as that water comes out it has the little minerals in it silicon dioxide which makes up uh, this siliceous center which builds around the geyser and over hundreds and thousands of years every little particle of that is built on top of the next until they build these massive cones like you see over there with the castle geyser All right, as we're watching this display right here at Lion Geyser, you can see that Castle Geyser still erupting back in the background. 
uh, about probably a half a mile away. It's going to erupt for 20 minutes. I don't know how long Lion Geyser goes off, but it sure is blowing its top right now. Look at that, spectacular. All right, well, it's cool to see the lion geyser go off. That's a rare one right there. I don't know how often it goes off, but it's pretty cool to be here when it does. That was spectacular. And at the same time, we've still got castle geyser over here blowing its top, sending water a couple hundred feet into the air. Uh, the lion geyser are not quite as powerful, but it's still a cool display. Uh, I think probably putting water off 70 feet into the air. I don't know exactly, but that's really cool glad we got to witness that i was just standing there talking about heart spring and uh pop the top went right off of lion geyser right here that was pretty cool all right as our uh, we're making our way over toward the castle geyser right behind me sawmill geyser always spraying out a little bit Looks like there's a fire or something up here. <laughs> something just blew up. <laughs> nope, just the castle geyser ranting and raving. So that a full eruption. No more water coming out, it looks like. It's just steam. But look at that steam blow out of there. That is wild. Massive amount of steam power right there. So castle geyser still going off. It's been a while. We were all the way over there when we first saw it going off. I didn't even hurry <laughs> until just a minute ago, and it's still blowing up, still spraying out water. However, after an eruption, it will spout steam into the sky for quite some time, 30 to 40 minutes from what I understand. This is an old geyser. You can see all of the center built up around it, the platform there. This thing's thousands of years old. All right, before we depart the Castle Geyser, however, I should point out its sidekick over here, the Crested Pool, which is right behind me. This is one of the hottest pools in the Upper Geyser Basin right here. Temperature's right around 199 degrees in the pool. That's boiling point here at about seven, 8,000 feet. The water in here is super clear because the water is so hot that bacteria doesn't really have the opportunity to grow in this pool. As you move outward from it, you'll see a little of the orange and yellow colors off to the edge. That indicates that the temperatures are somewhere in the 170, 180 degree range, allowing different bacteria to grow in that. However, not many bacteria can grow in 199 degrees boiling water, basically. All right, well, that kind of makes my day right there. The castle guys are just blowing up endlessly. It's not even ceasing its uh, eruption. It's just, just keeps going on. Mostly steam at this point. However, there is a fair amount of mist. You can make it out blowing over through there. And as I got into that region, I actually got completely soaked from the geyser. So um, better than a rainstorm, which we had last night out here. All right, friends, no time. All right, friends, a great time to come out and visit the geyser basins. It's during a pouring down, uh, during a rain downpour. All right, remember when we came through here just a few minutes ago and sawmill was spraying around? Not now, I bet you this pool is absolutely empty. The basin drained of all water, it's already sprayed it out and the water has made its way down to the Firehole River right below us here. Yeah, this basin's completely empty now, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> here are the twin spasmodic geyser. All right, friends, as we make our way on down the boardwalk, this is the Grand Geyser. Grand Geyser, one of the five predictable geysers here in the Upper Geyser Basin. It was predicted to go off last night uh, between uh, 6 and six and 6.30. Uh, I was out here about that time. It didn't go off then, but I think it went off a little bit after that. Today, it's predicted to go off somewhere between 3.30 and 5.30. So we'll see what happens, but we're going to continue on down the trail because nothing is going in here right now.
Here an entire lineup of geysers. That one's an old one too, you can see right there. That's the giant geyser. All right, friends, well back behind me here, you'll see giant geyser. This is one of the older geysers here in the upper geyser basin. You can tell because of the salacious center surrounding it there. Now this salacious center, we discussed that over at Castle Geyser, it takes a long time for that to form. You'll see the difference in the size of the geyser it's sort of in correlation with its age. This stuff, uh, the salacious center, deposits about one inch per century. So you can see quite a few inches here on giant geyser. And indeed, you're looking at thousands of years of eruptions coming from this specific geyser. Now this geyser was largely, uh, it went off a lot until 1955 and then it fell dormant. However, it slowly regained pressure, rega regained strength. And in 2007, it erupted over 50 times. However, largely unpredictable because just a couple years later, 2010, it only went off once. So. The last time it erupted right here was March of 2019, so over three and a half years ago, the last time that Giant Geyser went off. Back in the day, it used to shoot steaming water about 300 feet into the sky. It was one of the largest geysers here in the Upper Geyser Basin, but today it has reduced its velocity, its power, and it's only putting water out to about 200 to 250 feet. So Giant Geyser, not quite as giant as it used to be. All right, friends, a little further exploration here in the upper geyser basin brings us down to the grotto geyser. Now this thing erupts irregularly. However, when it does, it puts off water about 15 feet high splashes, and it will erupt anywhere from one and a half hours to 24 hours. So this thing can go for a while. And if you're planning on sitting around and watching it, you might be here all day. Well, we'll continue on down the trail. That's gonna do it for Grotto uh, Geyser. We'll head down here and see now if we can't find the Daisy Geyser. And I'm also looking forward to checking out the Morning Glory Pool. And then of course, the Riverside Geyser. Definitely gotta hit that one out. Booyah. There he is. That's my man, that's my man John right there. I follow you. Yeah, John. Park Junkie. Park junkie. <laughs> Across the river from me here is the Riverside Geyser. Now this is one of the most predictable and most regular geysers here in the Upper Geyser Basin. In fact, it's one of the most predictable geysers in the entire national park. And that's because they believe that this thing is sort of its own system. They don't think it has any real connection to many of the other areas, many of the other thermal features here in the Upper Geyser Basin. So that means it has a consistent source of heat and a consistent source of water. Gives it a, a nice regularity. Water is gonna spray right out over the river. However, it's uh, before it erupts, it's gonna have some water flowing out for like 20 minutes to 30 minutes so you can tell when it's getting ready to erupt however we've got a couple of hours so we're going to continue on down the trail try to pick up a couple of other geysers along the way and we'll make our way back here to riverside geyser in about two hours and see what happens So yeah, these things are literally everywhere here as we said before upper geyser basin holds over half of the world's geysers right here in Yellowstone National Park, the spiteful geyser, the fan geyser, all sorts of little geysers right along the Firehole River. What a trip this place must have been for the folks exploring this hundreds of years ago. Wow, what a trip. All right, as we make our way down the Upper Geyser Basin Trail, we come upon Morning Glory Pool down here toward the south end. This pool was once clear blue. However, uh, scientists believe that over the course of time, humans have thrown a lot of trash and debris into this thing, which has plugged up some of the vents through which hot water would enter the spring, enter the, enter the pool here. Now, of course, this temperature will affect the color of the water. 
the, the crystal blue that we see, those are the hottest temperatures. This yellow, orange, and green, lower temperatures, and they believe that those vents have been plugged up, restricting the water supply to it, which has indeed, uh, which has over time, uh, decreased the temperature of the water here in Morning Glory Pool. Now that's not a, a scientific fact. It may be a natural progression as well. Maybe water is being cut off to this pool by natural uh, occurrences. We just don't know, but man, it sure is a pretty spectacular spring. Look at that thing, amazing. But we'll continue on our journey now. All right, we've made our way down to the Artemisia geyser here. Now this is one of the more spectacular geysers when it goes. It is irregular, but this pool is full. It could go any time now. There's little boiling mounts of water coming up here that indicate that there's plenty of thermal activity below. The water is overflowing the pool. It could go at any time. This thing would be spectacular to see. I don't know how long we can wait around for it, but we're certainly gonna sit here for a little bit and see if we can't get an eruption from the Artemisia geyser here down in the southern part of the upper geyser basin. All right, gang. Well, the clock is ticking. I've been here at Artemisia for over an hour. The crowds of folks that were waiting for this to erupt when I got here have long gone. I've outweighed them all but Artemisia. It's outweighed me. It is more stubborn than the park junkie. That's a stubborn geyser right there. All right. Well, I'm going to depart. I'm going to get back up the trail. Go see if we can see Riverside and Grand Geyser. Let's go. Bye, Artemisia. All right, as we move back up the uh, upper basin trail toward Old Faithful, we come up on this hot spring, bubbling hot spring, flowing right through this little channel into the Firehole River. Man, that is crazy. Just boiling water flowing right into the river. What a cool scene. That's epic. Riverside guys are going off right now. I don't think we'll make it up to it in time to see it from its actual viewpoint over here. But that's pretty spectacular. Let's give it a shot though. Well, Riverside Geyser, one of the most predictable geysers in the park, and somehow despite the fact that it's the most predictable geyser in the park, or at least one of them, it goes off about every six hours. So somehow we still missed it. We were spending a little too much time down there at Artemisia trying to see that geyser, and we ended up overstaying our welcome down there and missed what happened up here with Riverside Geyser. So. We'll have to hit it on another day. All right, well, still pretty cool. Caught the steam show, no less, right? All right, as we move back up the trail here, we come back up on the grotto geyser right here. You may recall this thing was erupting violently when we passed it just a few short hours ago, but right now, pretty chill here at the grotto. All right, well, we're making our way back onto the boardwalk here. We'll head northbound or back over toward the more pools here back up toward the uh, Old Faithful area right there. Probably get an Old Faithful eruption in again today. As you can see, it can take some time to, uh, to travel around out here on these geyser basins. If you kind of want to see the geysers erupt, you're going to have to spend a little time. You know, a stroll through uh, is cool, but it's very unlikely that you're going to get the actual eruptions of some of the geysers that you may want to see. The park's predictable geysers, there's six of them that are predictable here in Yellowstone. Five of those found right here in the upper geyser basin with Old Faithful, uh, Riverside, Daisy, Grand, and Castle. Here we have the giant geyser last erupting in 2019. We spoke of that one earlier. That's an old geyser. You can just look at that column of center around it. You tell that that is an old geyser. But as you can see, traveling out here on the uh, upper geyser basin boardwalk, it's really cool. Um, just the, 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 the scenery, the features that are here are out of this world. I mean, it's just absolutely spectacular, really bizarre, unique landscape. 
but you're gonna need some time to travel to if you if you really want to see some of the geysers erupt and you want to sit back and kind of wait because that's kind of what it is at a few of them it's kind of a waiting game it's not an it's not an exact science they're not on a timer so to speak old faithful even fluctuates somewhat you know about 20 minutes in either direction sometimes but a lot of these that do have some sort of predictability like castle geyser or or riverside geyser these things they're about uh, just kind of an ish time frame on it so if you want to kick back on this trail spend some time and see the geysers that you want to see you're you're going to be in for a full day perhaps i mean i came in here into the park today without a plan and just decided i'd cruise the upper geyser basin and see what 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 kind of scenery unfolded and it's been spectacular all right friends well here we are grand geyser right behind me and as you can see the stands are mostly empty because the geyser just went off about 20 minutes ago so that tells me that in waiting for artemisia we missed two fairly predictable geysers we missed riverside geyser which is very dependable and we missed right here the grand geyser two predictable geysers missed because park junkie was waiting for artemisia and as we make our way back down the boardwalk you'll notice sawmill geyser once again sawmill geyser sawing away out here and now we make our way back by the castle geyser this morning's eruption midday eruption wow was super cool looks like it's mostly finished still spraying a little bit of water up there but certainly not a lot nothing like we saw earlier what a spectacular scene this morning from castle geyser right here all right as we're leaving it looks like beehive geyser are going off over there and that's one that i haven't seen yet so yeah beehive's a pretty cool one but it's usually very difficult to predict every few days it goes off so here it is today let's see how it looks old faithful right here beehive on the other side of the firehole river looks like it's been sending up a plume for a little bit here so that's cool we got to check that out before we got out of here so yeah with that we're gonna call it good old faithful getting ready to go again here shortly but we're gonna call it a day what a scene out here we saw a few geysers today pretty cool overall you're guaranteed to see some cool stuff if you spend some time out on these geyser basins just go out and stroll around as you see though it takes some time to be able to cover this ground and if you really want to get into seeing specific geysers you're really going to have a complicated endeavor in fitting a lot of them into one day you have to really have the stars aligned for you to get a lot of geysers in one day we got a few today it was a pretty good run so park junkie's going to call it good and get back to the map room and start doing some work but thanks for tuning in as always of course you can check me out over at parkjunkie.com that's your fix for national park info guides to all 63 national parks over there you can also check out my instagram feed at the park junkie and over at facebook park junkie as well friends i'll check out today we'll we'll get back with you soon and we'll have some more fun adventures thanks as always for tuning in certainly appreciate it we'll check you on down the trail cheers <laughs>